the question I always have, and most of the people that are not even most, all of the athletes that work with Victor Conte and even Memo, um, uh -huh. I can only use this because you work with both of those guys. Um, they all were good. Most of them undefeated, world champions. They already, uh, you know, exceeded some expectations. Most of them were undefeated. All of the stuff that they've accomplished, and all of a sudden they get on the phone and they call him. And I, and, and you, you were a guy who was always good. And what is in the mind of, of, of an athlete who's already good, who's already undefeated, who's already probably a world champion? Why would they call Victor? Why did you, you know, say, hey, this is what I want to do on what? PDs? Why would they call him? They're already good. No, they 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 not they 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 good, but they want to stay good. And you only if I go get a car, if I go to get a a motor, a small block, say a two ninety six, you know what I'm saying? I only can make that small block as fast as I can make it. So if you ain't already got talent all the way on the breaking of breaking a world record, steroids only gonna help you. Like he said, two tenths, you know. He only can do so much. So, why why would I get a a junker and try to turn it into the fastest car in the world? <laughs> I, I I need something with already the, the aerodynamics. Makes sense. So it can hold the motor that I need to put inside of it, and the nitrogen and everything. That's the same thing with the human body, right? If I if I got somebody that's so far back there, I can't take a eleven flat sprinter and turn into a nine five eight sprinter. It ain't gonna happen. Okay. So you're making all this money and you wanna continue to make money. And I say I got the fountain of youth to keep you around. You it, it it's it's just like the Peyton Manning's, it's just like all the ones that they end up at the end of the day, the true star come out. It's because we never want to go to the athlete's graveyard, <laughs> the junkyard. We never want to go to the athlete's junkyard, you know? Uh, and so you resort to, and some of be because he, he, no one want to let, let it go. We want to be great forever. Wow, that's a good point. Now, I did a video on this channel where I talked about Andre Berto. He's a he's a former boxer. He he got uh, popped for Nandrolone uh, back in 2012. But I was educating the audience on the process of how he never kind of spoke to the public as much about it. He did obtain a lawyer. Victor Conti said his words, not mine that he hooked Andre Berto up with a specific lawyer. And when I conducted my research, I found that it was the same lawyer that you hired, Mr. Howard, Howard Jacobs. Howard Jacobs, okay. He's the, of course, he's the defense attorney for all <laughs> people that get busted for steroid use or PEDs. Yes. Now, he had a quote in an article that said that there are people that have lied on you, Tim, um, and the person that's real high on that list is Victor. And the reason why he said that is because, of course, as you know, and you made a reference to it in the Netflix documentary, Victor Conti basically made a phone call to the news station while he was under investigation and after he'd been indicted. And he basically just told on you. He just started telling on everybody. Right. Um, what made you hire Howard Jacobs? How did you get in contact with him? How did you know he was the attorney to help with these situations? Well, first I hired uh, Chris Arganis. Uh, she she was she's a she's a huge, per she was with she had Bar Barry had her, and then we seeked out Howard Jacob because Howard Jacob is the is the leading drug lawyer in track and field, right? Yeah. He understands the track and field body, right? And he had never seen a case like mine before because we didn't have a positive test. So it was the first time going down to a road fighting 
a non-positive test. And so then we went to an arbitration where the arbitration was three guys that was getting paid by USA Track and Field. There was no way I was going to, and not just that, after we won, after we lost the case, one of the, the judges that was on the case, his, a lady that worked for him, I have the letter, I'll send you the letter, sent us a letter showing us where he was working for water at the same time he was being on the arbitration. So actually my case should have been thrown out, right? So they said I had to I had to come up with another. I had already paid whew, four hundred thousand. Wow. So they, yeah, they said I had to come up with another two seventy five to go over to Switzerland, and that's what got me in the drug game. So this is what happened. I started out selling cocaine, but I was losing profit, and then. I'm sit there and I watch Frank Lucas and stuff like that. And they said, Coke or heroin, you can cut it three, four times. So I got in that game and I got my head busted. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. this was all to raise money very quickly to pay for a lawyer to go back and start running. Wow. So Howard Jacob understands that this system is dirty and that Victor Conti is helping the system continue to be dirty. Right. Right. So. Hmm. <laughs> he didn't, Howard Jacobs, I've seen a lot of his um, quotes and it seemed like he didn't, um, he didn't, he didn't like Victor. It just seemed like that in his quotes. Well, you can't like someone that's out. You just don't. You just don't give someone as give them something just to tell them that he's strong. You got to have some type of dignity about yourself, right? Yeah. That you not came in these people's life, these people wouldn't have got in trouble. And when you came in these people's life, you supposed to, have to protect these people. Not just that, you're going to continue to come into people's lives. After the fact. After the fact. Lay down. Go on about your business. Sell your ZMA. So you went to jail because you was trying to basically fundraise the $275,000. And the only way I knew how to raise that type of money that fast was from the streets. What I learned as a child, I learned that I did, I tried to redo re as an adult <laughs> but she was doing it in another country though you said no right? i was no i was doing it in virginia i got i got caught in virginia oh okay all right and i got caught from a friend he had got in trouble and he was gonna flip some money for me and he ended up wearing a wire and a video and mm. yeah that part and how many years or, or months did you do uh, in jail? I did four years and six months. Wow. And supervised five release? And five years on probation. I was about to ask you about supervised release. Five years. Mm hmm Five years release. Wow, man. That's, you know, nobody never, we never knew that part. This is the yeah, first time we ever heard that. I was at Maxwell Federal Penitentiary. The same route I took as a child to get to Blend Junior College because I was driving with a, a, a family member and he was asleep and I saw Montgomery, Alabama and I pulled off at the gas station to get gas because it was named Montgomery, Alabama. And that same gas station is right on the exit that you go into to get, go to prison. Mm. Max, you better say it full circle, homie. And Ooh. you, I know you was, I know you was on that bus looking. Yes, yes. I yes, know you yes. was on that bus looking like, oh. Oh no! When I got my piece of paper on my designation, it said M O. I'm like, I'm going to Missouri. Where I'm going? It said M O N. That's what it said, M O N. And you know, other people had Virginia, South Carolina. I'm like, why ain't why didn't send me to South Carolina? What is M O N? They said Montgomery, Alabama. I said, are you kidding me? Mm. <laughs> I went to Montgomery, Alabama, homie. Mm. So four years and six months 
Maxwell for the pick. Yeah.